Many of you don't know there's a brand new MMR vaccine that's coming by GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, I imagine it's probably going to uh, replace the Merck MMR. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but we actually got our hands on the, on the trials of the new MMR by Merck, and I just want to, once again, we've just briefly looked at this. These are huge documents, but we found uh, a, a section of this, a graph, that I think is going to blow your mind. So let's just take a look. Here's the brand new MMR coming our way, and this is the Pediatric Infectious Disease Society. This was published in the journal. Immunogenicity, uh, immunogenicity and safety of a measles, mumps, rubella vaccine administered as a first dose to children aged 12 to 15 months. A phase three randomized non-inferiority lot-to-lot consistency study. I, I want to point out that non-inferiority. Go back to that word because this is one that took me a while to, to wrap my head around. Now we talk about the double-blind inert placebo. The non-inferiority uh, is the way that we do these studies. This is how they get around it. Instead of doing a placebo study, they do a non-inferiority study, which means basically we're going to compare it to another vaccine, and if it doesn't suck too much worse than that one, it's not non, you know, it's a non-inferior study, it's not inferior, it's just as bad or similar, then we're going to approve it. So that's how they do these studies. And in this one, of course, they did exactly that. They, uh, they, we randomly assigned children aged 12 to 15 months in a 3 to 1 ratio to receive one dose of either one of three production lots of MMRRIT, that's the new one, or one of two commercial lots of the control, the MMR2. So the control is getting the old MMR vaccine, which we showed you just a few weeks ago, caused gastrointestinal illness in nearly half the children, respiratory illnesses in nearly half the children within about a 42-day uh, period. Really alarming results. Uh, the study was only done on about 300 kids, and now it's given to millions of people. So now we're going to take that crappy MMR that had terrible trials itself, the MMR2, and we're going to compare it to our brand new MMR. So how about we take a look at how well that went? Can we bring up the chart, please? Drum roll. Okay. Take a look at this. So this is in the children that were given it in the first 42 days, okay? First 42 days, the unsolicited adverse events, meaning we didn't ask them to go out of the way. They went out of their way to say that we are having symptoms that we haven't had before. In, the, in these 42 days, you told us we should report weird things. 50% reported an unsolicited adverse event. Now, these are going to be smaller things like fevers and, and, and irritableness and maybe some serious crying or pain. 50% of the group that got the new MMR complained of unsolicited adverse events. And look at the MMR, too. Really similar, 47.9%. So in that category, the new MMR actually performed worse. Now let's move on to grade three. So now we're stepping up. Now these are much more serious adverse events. These are things like seizures or high fevers over 103 degrees. And when we look at that group, now we're starting to have serious adverse side effects. Look at this. In the MMR, the brand new MMR, 6.1% experienced a grade three adverse event inside of 41 days, 42 days. So 42 days and these people are getting really sick. And look at the other group. What's that? All right, uh, we'll, we'll move on. And, so, and then and also look at MMR2, same thing. 6.6, .6, look how common the injuries are. I mean, these aren't anomalies. Both groups are showing up just the same. Everything we've been saying, parents complain about injury, seizures after the vaccine. Oh, that never happens. Well, look at this group. Now let's move on because it gets even worse. So now we're going to look at severe adverse events, okay? Severe adverse events, SAEs. 2.1%. Now remember, this is only within 42 days, 2.1% experienced a severe adverse reaction compared to the MMR2, right about the same at 1.9%. But think about that. When they say that we give, think about their argument. We give vaccines all the time and people just blame the vaccines because they're getting them all the time. They blame them for these adverse events. But if that was the case, if every 41 days your child had a severe adverse event, meaning worse than seizures, worse than high fevers, uh, this category, I don't think anyone died, but it could be included in the severe adverse events. Death is usually in there. So it shows you how high the bar can go with this. If you were having a severe 2% 
every 40 days, within years, your child would be a, you know, every child in America would be sick with severe adverse events. We're not. By nature, we just aren't that sick. So clearly, something's gone terribly wrong. Now look at this. Now they looked and they, and they got people to report. I think they made phone calls somewhere between the 42 days and 180 days. Now look at this. So beyond the severe adverse events, so remember, we're at 2% severe adverse events. 6% had a grade 3. So now you're at 8% have a, basically some form of very severe adverse event. Look at this next category. These are adverse events that prompted an ER visit that drove children to the ER. 10%, 10% of the children that got the new MMR went to the ER, and 10% of the MMR2 group went to the ER. When I'm talking to the news agencies, and they say, well, don't you feel bad about the people that are getting measles, and aren't you to blame for that? Do you know that there's people going to the hospital with measles? Did you know that 10% of people that get the vaccine in the trials go to the ER? Are you kidding me? Why aren't you covering that story? This vaccine's a disaster. And then lastly, this is, this, this is really, really scary. Of, you know, inside that 180 days, new, so NOCDs, that's new onset chronic disease. New onset chronic disease, meaning this child did not have this chronic disease, 3.4% of the children. So these aren't even in the, these in, this isn't the SAEs, this isn't the severe adverse events. These are children that are now going to have a chronic illness that will probably last the rest of their lives. Look at those numbers, 3.4% that were in the trial within the first 180 days developed a new chronic illness for the rest of their lives and about the same in the MMR2 group. Folks, you can't make this stuff up. This is the science, Gail King. This is what science looks like. You really ought to try putting your glasses on and reading some of this stuff instead of saying, do the anti-vaxxers understand the science? Mm, I don't know, but the vaccine educated certainly do. All right, read this. All, so this is the, in the same report. All children concomitantly received a first dose of hepatitis A vaccine, Havrix GS key, and varicella vaccine, Verivax, and children in the United States also received a fourth dose of the 13-valent pneumococcal conjugate vaccine, Prevnar 13. The study consisted of in-person visits on day zero and day 42 and a telephone call on day 180. So what we know is not only did you get one of these vaccines, you got a whole load of other vaccines. Both groups got tons of vaccines plus either one of the MMRs. Now, do you think they're going to go and blame one of those other vaccines for the severe adverse events? But look at this. Nearly 20% then, if we're to put 3%, 10%, 2%, 6%, all of those terrible adverse events, 20% of the children receiving these vaccines had severe reactions, fevers, seizures, even worse, hospitalizations, and chronic illness that will last the rest of their lives. And you wonder why people like me aren't going to put this crap into our kids? I've said it before. We've seen the greatest decline in public health in history. Here in America, we have the worst health stats in the industrialized world. And we're going to let the CDC and the FDA and the EPA that Brent Wisner just described as totally corrupted force our government to pass laws that take away our rights to decide whether this crap is injected into us? Here's their conclusion. Both MMR vaccines resulted in comparable reactogenicity profiles and no safety concerns were detected. Really? That's, what, that's how you saw that? That's really interesting. Look at the amount of conflicts of interest that were involved in this trial. This is their list of conflicts of interest, just a few. Uh, I don't know. I work for GSK. Oh, I work for Merck. I, I work for Sanofi Aventus. I, I work for Novartis. Oh, did I tell you I work for GSK, Protein Science, Metamune, Merck and Company, Novartis, Sanofi Pasteur, Sanofi Pasteur. I mean, look at that. These are the people that are doing the science. 